Good morning. It is Disney day eight and we did something that we never do on a park day. We slept in. <laughs> uh, slept until eight on Animal Kingdom day. Animal Kingdom opened for early entry at seven and there was no way, no way we were going to do early entry again. That was pretty rough the other day. <laughs> So I had to wake up at like 5.30 to go to Walt Disney World. And while we do it for Disneyland, it's only once a month. We're not doing it twice in one trip for Disney World. So we slept in today and we may not get a whole lot of riding done today, but we have, um, it's tough to be a bug to go to and uh, Rafiki's Planet Watch and things like that. So we're gonna hit up all that stuff and I hope you enjoy it. Come on this adventure, let's get going. Well, we finally got to Animal Kingdom. We left our room one hour ago, right that now. Kind of That's when we left our room. We waited 40 minutes at the bus stop and it took them 20 minutes to get us here once we got on the bus. I'm glad that wasn't um, our first day here. So keep that in mind for bus transportation if you are not the type of person to rope drop because once the park has been open for an hour or two, they, they, they no longer prioritize buses at the bus stops. I'll never get tired of looking at the tree of life. Every time, every time it makes me happy. We're going to Africa first, and I think we're going to Rafiki's Planet Watch is probably where we're headed over to first then. Left side, right side, you will not matter. Come on in. Both sides will be boarding, friends. I have to get on that train right there. Take it up to Rafiki's Planet Watch. Squirrel, go, squirrel, go. Some sort of animal right there, just rhino. Oh, I can see it. You probably can't. It's backlit under there. If you've never been back to Rafiki's Planet Watch, they have a long trail to the conservation center, but they have these little huts every now and again with information, and occasionally they have a, a goat that you can see and pet. And Rafiki is always pointing you this way. And here is the main conservation building. Benjamin, what animal do you see on that board? Panda. Is that a panda? Oh. We've got a little petting zoo down here. You can come in here and uh, pet some goats. Quite the baby goats. The brown one? He's kind of big. Looks like they have a story here, Animal Encounter Care Story. Nice little bench area and a stage that uh, they can do a presentation at one o'clock. Grab a brush, James, and you can brush the goat. You go find a goat to brush. He was trying to eat James's shirt. He was trying to eat James's shirt? They got a pig right here. Hey, Mr. Pig, you're a big pig. You can be a big pig too. Oi! They uh, did put something up on the screen here at that hey, stage area that so you can watch as well. So that's really handy. Oh, look at the little baby elephant. Which is just fine. Where to go? They were telling about the birth story of little baby Stella. I didn't pull the camera up early enough, of course. I haven't been filming the whole thing, but I, I've been watching this television screen here when my kids are pitting the goats. And it's very, very fascinating. They're talking about an elephant in a bee project where uh, in Africa, the elephants are getting into people's like gardens and homes and areas and things like that. And then the elephants are being put down or, or killed because they're destroying property. So they found out that the elephants are afraid of bees. And by putting up fences that have beehives attached to the fences, if a elephant bumps into the wire, it shakes the beehive and the bees come out of the beehive and they start to, you know, like sting the elephant or, or buzz and the elephants run away because they really hate bees. Um, they, they did a test where they just played the bee buzzing sound and the elephants like all, you know, ran away from the, the buzzing sound. So it's very, very fascinating the way that they're uh, protecting people's property and saving the elephants' lives at the same time by putting up these bee fences in Africa. I just, I just thought that was really, really fascinating. 
once we get inside the conservation station, we can see a whole bunch of little displays that uh, have different insects and animals in them. And of course, they also have uh, like workers in here doing different things and uh, teaching you about the different ways that they help conserve and take care of animals. Underneath the keeper's hand, and here it looks like they're they're uh, doing some sort of uh, procedure. And they have it just so that you can watch whatever procedures they're doing in here. They even have a cam that's directly above so you can watch and see what they're doing. What are they doing? Changing the bandage. Yeah, the surgery to restrict his heart rate. Oh, yeah. And the first time they did it, it didn't take. So um, he actually had some that was growing in that was going to be uncomfortable, almost like an ingrown nail. Um, so they had to go back and take a little bit more. So now no they're just surgery. changing. Yeah, now they're this just time. changing the uh, <laughs> just changing the bandages. This is the data. Also here in the conservation station, they have the animation experience, which if you're familiar with Disneyland and their uh, animation building and you can learn to draw Disney characters, this is the place to do it in Walt Disney World. It's over in Rafiki's Planet Watch and it is at certain times of the day. Uh, this is the first one at 10 a.m. They have one at 1045 and I think every 45 minutes basically thereafter. Now we have to take the train back in order to get back to Harambe. The Harambe Market. Now that we're done with the conservation station, we're heading towards Asia. We want to go to the local foods cafe and see if we can get some mini mango pie and mini chocolate silk pie. And we're also going to go on the Maharaja Jungle Trek. Here is my mini chocolate pie. So glad that I got this. Amy and I have to do this every single year. Mini mango pie for Amy. This is like your one um, guilty pleasure type thing, isn't that? Is that the way to say it? Guilty pleasure? Um, there's no guilt in eating this. Oh, it's sugary, it's calories. Oh, okay. <laughs> the little baby ducks came to say hi while we were eating our pies. The Maharaja Jungle Trek is located by Cali River Rapids. So we're gonna go back here. You're welcome. Thank you. I feel like a lot of people don't really come back here. They've got a Komodo dragon over there on the rock. I can hear Amy's favorite bird if we wait five seconds. Maybe. 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 Amy's favorite bird. Hey, he's your favorite bird too. Mm-hmm. He He's him, not going to do it. He asked him for us his girlfriend. Oh, there he is. This here is one spot to usually look for the tiger. He does not appear to be here at the moment. So we'll have to look for him around a different way. There we go. He's sitting over there in the trees there. He's having a break. The aesthetic through here is just amazing, peaceful, relaxing. I like it. Check out these animals. Water buffaloes. Oh, Benjamin, come here. Benjamin, can you tell me what animal that is? A water buffalo. A water, A water buffalo. A water buffalo. I can say it fast. Yeah, you could say it well. Your brother just mispronounced it a second ago, and it sounded really cute, and I was trying to get it on camera. But, but when I asked him, he actually said it right. <laughs> Three, two, one, I am, go. I am not seeing the water buffalo song. Oh, come on, you just did. No. Everyone's got no, a water, water buffalo. buffalo. Yours is... I don't even know the words, though. Hello. Here's a water buffalo up nice and close, and he's getting a drink. You can scan the QR code for a bird spotting guide while in the aviary here. And now we're going to go find our favorite bird that goes, oh wow. Don't get too close. Don't get too close, Benjamin, okay? The great Argus pheasant. Hello. 
Why is he not going, oh wow? I don't know. <coughs> oh wow! He's following grandma. Well, we saw the oh wow bird, but he didn't make any oh wow sounds for while we were in there. We heard him. There's too many people, though. Yeah, we heard him while we were out and about, but not while we were in there. But there was also a lot of people. Yes. I feel like last time when we heard him and we were in there, it was like only us and maybe, you know, a couple other people. Mm-hmm. Long lines for Everest over here. So it does say only 30 minutes, but the line is out into the pathway here. It's also very busy in the path. So we were just talking about it being Memorial Day weekend and how even though Memorial Day is on Monday, it's Saturday before Memorial Day, and yesterday was Friday, like we had such an amazing time at Magic Kingdom yesterday and I didn't feel like it was Memorial Day weekend. And uh, you had a theory about why that is the case. My theory is that because it's a holiday weekend, we're now handing the summer crowds. They have hired more staff at this point. Like they probably hire a bunch of seasonal workers that may have started even like in the past two weeks. We usually come about what, three weeks ago? Three weeks earlier And I than feel this. like it's that lull Just period where um, the are, they don't have the seasonal workers yet so even though the park might be less busy like in terms of walking around the rides are just as long because they have half they as many they workers they can't run as much sort of capacity okay. two of them are military papas and their names are fern juniper dill stitch robinson and cooper there is so much to do at any of these four parks that is not even like you know something that you just schedule you just happen upon it, like the bird show back there and things like that. Uh, as you're walking around, like we saw uh, Kevin, the, the snipe from Up, walking around and just things like that you just happen upon. And it's that's what makes it so special and magical that you, you weren't even planning on seeing it or enjoying it, but you could partake of it. Well, now we're walking into Pandora because we're going to Satuli Canteen for lunch, one of the best quick services in all of Animal Kingdom. If you can't find good food at Animal Kingdom, you are not looking hard enough. If Restaurantosaurus is what you look up and you're like, oh, that doesn't sound good, <laughs> there is way more. If you see Pizza Fari, oh, that just looks like terrible pizza. It is. Yeah, it is terrible pizza. Try Flame Tree Barbecue, amazing barbecue food. L Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe, amazing Asian inspired food. Satuli Canteen. I can't even tell you what this food is like because it's just totally unique and it's amazing. We're gonna show it to you in just like a minute. I will never, never get over this. Waterfall! You can thank Pandora and pretty much all of Animal Kingdom to Joe Rohde. Joe, why did you retire? You were the best. Please, please, please come back. And here is Satuli Canteen. Now, if you didn't know it was a sit-down restaurant or a quick service restaurant rather, I could see how you might not know it's here because the sign is really, really teeny tiny over here off to the left. Otherwise, it just looks like a place to come and sit down, but this is one of the best places to get food here in Animal Kingdom. All right, so here we have Satuli Cantina's food. Both of these meals are a combination beef and chicken, except for this one is with noodles, and this one is with red potato hash and a green vinaigrette. Now, they both also come with boba balls that we chose not to put on either plate. And then I got the cheeseburger steam pods. Now, I got double the potato chips because I don't like slaw, but you could also get potato chips and slaw. Uh, but these cheeseburger steam pods, they're, they're basically bao buns, but they taste like McDonald's cheeseburgers. They're amazing and fantastic. And we can't wait to dive into this meal. All right. First bite. Just as good as you remember it. So we made this our second meal this time. 
because I wanted to eat at Flame Tree Barbecue, and I knew that if we ate here first, we'd get it twice. That we'd be getting it twice. <laughs> it's that good. And here is my cheeseburger steam pods. Look at that gooey goodness inside of this bell bun. Tastes just like a McDonald's cheeseburger. I mean, wow. It's uncanny how much like a cheeseburger this tastes. The boys were just told they're going to the playground now. Look how happy. Now that we're done with lunch, we likely won't be back in Pandora, so I'm gonna savor this right now. Ah. Amy would like to go under this waterfall up here. Look, I can see the back side of water. O2H. Oh, actually, that's like the side side of water. The last time we were here, I should also preface this side by saying we have a tradition of always buying a t shirt when we come to Walt Disney World, uh, along with our tradition to always buy a set of chopsticks so the chopsticks we got earlier at epcot um but last year we did not buy a t-shirt so this year i've made up for it and bought two t-shirts and here is my everest shirt 15 years of roman with the snowman so after it pretty much monsooned on us our right. first day here the forecast had said that it was going to rain literally every single day of our trip except for like Tuesday and then it ended up not raining at all. We got a spritz earlier today, but we actually kind of wanted the rain yeah, today. I was about to say. We wanted it yesterday too yeah. for that for that matter. We need to hot rod, quick. One of my favorite things is watching the smiling families get their pictures taken. Seeing other people have a great time is what brings me joy. I love coming to places like this with other people especially when they've never been before. Oh man, taking them to Disneyland or Walt Disney World for the very first time, such an amazing experience when you can watch the joy hit their eyes as they experience things for the first time. I actually just watched uh, videos from Paging Mr. Morrow maybe, what, three weeks ago? It was his first trip to Disneyland in a really, really, really long time. And he was just so, was giddy. so giddy. It was amazing. You should check out his Disneyland videos. Everything just made him happy because he had ridden it before, seen it before, and it was great. There's Kevin again. Woo boy, that sun is beating down and it is hot. But here we are at the Boneyard. Right off to the left is the entrance to the playground. And he's off, there he goes. And James is sticking near me, but go ahead, run free. Run free. The Boneyard, the place where the kids run free because there's only one way out and that's right there. So, so long as we're sitting here, they can't get out without us noticing and they can just take off. There's actually like a path that goes all the way over a bridge on the other side of the walkway. And I mean, just look how massive this place is. Now that the kids are done playing, we're gonna come do It's Tough to Be a Bug. Hello, Tree of Life Roots. That's really cool. Look, a giant dung ball. Here we go, we're in the It's Tough to Be a Bug Theater. It's been a while since I've done this show. Back off, spiders! They're mine. Bug bombs. Did you like that show, Benjamin? <laughs> did, did you like that show, James? Yeah! <laughs> Our kids are so opposite. Our final thing to do in Animal Kingdom today is to come to the single rider entrance of Expedition Everest. And we're gonna ride this ride as our final thing. We are meeting up with some friends today who are local to the Orlando area. We're gonna meet at the pool at our hotel a little bit. 
and then we're going to dinner with them at the Yale and Compass because they're not coming into a park. So we're actually, once we leave here at about 2, 2.30, we're not coming back into Animal Kingdom the rest of the night. We're done with Animal Kingdom, um, but we will be going to Yale and Compass a little bit later, and that'll be, you know, all a part of this video as well. It's about 20 minutes before hopping time, which is one of the best times to ride Expedition Everest. Now we did the single rider, uh, but literally waited like less than five minutes. And uh, I was in the middle row, James is in the far back row, and Amy was in the completely front row. And um, yeah, I mean, it went really, really fast. If you're wondering about single rider requirements, you just have to be tall enough to ride the ride and be at least seven years of age. So James is able to do it because he is seven. And right, I, buddy? I was in the very back well. Yes, you were. Well, I got my ninth frozen Coke and it comes in a Lion King souvenir sipper from Oddwalla. It's a little bit more expensive, but they don't have regular cups here. All right, we also got the uh, premium Mickey bar and this is a 50th edition. They uh, dip it in raspberry or blue raspberry and then they put sprinkles on it so it's a specialty 50th hand dipped mickey bar say bye, bye animal, kingdom. animal kingdom bye animal kingdom Ooh, all on was waterfalls we're going across the bridge here cute little bridge area here we go, the Yacht Club. This is where we're eating dinner, Ale and Compass. Since we're gonna be eating with friends, I'm not gonna actually film dinner, but I'll uh, video record our food, what we're gonna get and that sort of thing. And then we'll um, maybe talk about it a little later this evening, but we just wanna enjoy our time with our friends. So uh, no formal review from this. If you wanna check out our review, you can check out uh, our breakfast review at the Ale and Compass that we did last year, which I'll link to right now.